The purpose of these videos is to orient you to what components look like and how you act on them. If you haven't yet watched the Watch Me First video, please do that first, as it lets you know what to expect. As you read in Chapter 5, like comments, summaries are spaces for writing that are linked to coded segments. But summaries are displayed in grids and tables, not embedded within documents like comments are. In this video, we show you what summaries look like and how to create and use them. Like maps and charts, summaries are different from the other components in terms of the actions that can be taken on them. This is because summaries are displays of other components, namely coded segments, for activated documents and codes. Therefore, other than the action of writing in them, and the routine housekeeping actions of displaying and exporting them, summaries cannot be acted upon independently like other components. Summaries can either be accessed from the shortcut menu icons or from the analysis menu. I'm going to open a summary grid first. Summary grids display documents as columns and codes as rows, and they show which documents contain coded segments for each code. So when I scroll across, you can see that some intersections between a document in the columns and the codes in the rows have blue squares in them, and this is indicating that coded segments sit at that intersection. So in some ways, the summary grid is similar to a code matrix browser. But there are two key differences. Firstly, clicking on one of these blue squares shows in the coded segments panel to the right the coded segments for that intersection. And I can navigate around and see coded segments for different intersections in this way. If I was doing this from a code matrix browser, we would be accessing coded segments in the retrieve segments window, not in the code matrix browser itself. The second and more important difference is that there is a space in the grid adjacent to the coded segments where you can write about or summarize those coded segments. If I want to see coded segments in their document context in order to inform what is written in the summary area, then I can just click on the blue link and it will be displayed in the background. So I'll just do that now, clicking on a blue link and moving that out of the way shows me in the document browser that coded segment. As is generally true in MaxQDA, I can also ask to focus the display in a summary grid to combinations of activated documents and codes. You can see on the right that I've got the broad brush codes activated currently, and up in the document system, I've also got the focus group documents activated. So that means that if I now ask from the summary grid for only activated documents, and only activated codes, the summary grid becomes focused accordingly. Now we can see that many of the intersections between the focus group documents and the broad brush codes have blue squares, indicating that there are coded segments at these intersections. Some of those intersections also have green highlighting, and this is what indicates that summaries have also been written for those intersections. So if I choose one of those, you'll see that on the right hand side, a summary has also been written. These summaries were created previously, but I can add to them at any time. So just putting my cursor in there, I can write additional summary information. Summary grids facilitate the comparison of coded segments on a document-by-document -document basis and provide a space for synthesizing data that are linked to the source context. Comments could be used for the same purpose, but the difference with summaries is that we can also generate summary tables. After writing summaries, separate summary tables can be created to display just the summaries for particular documents and codes. We do that using this icon here. You'll see that at the moment I haven't got any summary tables created, so let's just create one now. I'll just choose three codes to focus this on. And you'll see that I can choose to see only the activated documents. 
And now I've got a display focused around the documents that I'm interested in, the focus groups in this example, and the three codes that I chose. Summary tables remain integrated with data because the coded segments can be accessed from the table. So if I right click, I can ask to display associated coded segments. And in the background, in the retrieve segments window, I'll be able to see the coded segments for that particular summary. And of course I can do that for any summary that's displayed in this table. If I want to interpret these summaries in relation to document variables, then I can ask for those to be displayed as well. So I'm going to recreate this table, choosing the same codes, but this time I'm going to choose variables. You can see on the right that, that I can either choose to have the variables display in the first column, where the document's names are listed, or I can have the variables in their own column. And that's what I'm going to do in this example. I'm just going to cho choose the employment status and the region so that I can think about the summaries in relation to those variable values. And now you'll see that I have two columns indicating the employment status of the participants in the focus group and whether they are living in an urban, rural area or a mixture. If the need arises, I can export this table as a spreadsheet to view and work with the summaries outside of MaxQDA, although that spreadsheet will not have the connection with the source data like the summary table does. There are many different uses that summaries may be put to, but it's important to realise that there are separate writing space in addition to comments, editing documents and memos. So please look at those sections of the book and the videos about those components in order to think more about appropriate uses of writing spaces in MaxQDA for your analytic tasks.